Hello, I'm Britt from Slam and Spines and welcome to my video. Hello, today is Monday, December 6th. It is about 11.30 a.m. I am very much in the mood to do a vlog this week. It's been a long time since I've recorded a vlog and I just turned in my final paper for the last class I had to wrap up and I still have like one or two more things but they're small things so I'm feeling very excited, very relieved to have the bulk of my assignments done for the semester. I haven't read an adult book in, well, I just finished a graphic novel last night but other than that, I have not read an adult book in several weeks. I've mainly been reading picture books because that's where I that's just where I am mentally and emotionally right now. So for this reading vlog, I'm going to be reading picture books to cheer myself up uh, because I'm feeling the effects of seasonal depression. I've also been working more hours at my job because we're, we've been a little bit short-staffed, so I'm just feeling a little bit more tired and yeah, I just want to read picture books. So I have a stack of picture books I got out from the library over the weekend. Um, these are all biographies, so they're all picture books that are non-fiction that are about somebody specifically. And so in this vlog, I'm just going to read some of them and share them with you and maybe talk a little bit about my life and personal things that I do throughout the week. But I'm excited about it because, like I said, it's been a while since I've done a vlog. And I mean, I don't know if anyone cares about my life, but, you know, I'm going to put it on the internet and anyone who wants to opt in can opt in. So this morning I'm going to read Rise from Caged Bird to Poet of the People, Maya Angelou. I've actually not read I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings and anything else by Maya Angelou. Uh, I know a little bit about what happens in it, but I haven't had to read it for any classes and I just haven't picked it up yet in my own time. So, I mean, it is one of those classics that I intend to read at some point, but I'm so far my first impression is I really love the color scheme of the illustrations. And I'm wondering what they're going to write about her. You want to you want story time? Hey. Oh no. She just wanted to use my cushion as a way to get closer to the floor. Rise. Okay, so there's a foreword by Colin Johnson, which is Maya Angelou's grandson. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so this seems to be written in like some sort of like poetic verse. That's cool, the town of stamps is depicted in their clothing. Young Maya loves stamps. Young Maya hates stamps. Hate and love, love and hate, the seesaw of the south. This book kind of touches on some serious stuff. I, I think it does so gracefully, but... One day Bailey spies a body, just a few years older than he, being pulled from a pond. Mama Henderson knows too well any white eyes, not liking what they see, could turn an accusation into a drowning, a death, a lynching. I didn't know she was a dancer. It's funny that I'm 
reading picture books to cheer myself up, and yet this one, like, almost made me cry so far. Oh my god. Oh, she knew Langston Hughes. She was also friends with James Baldwin. Oh, this is a good one. And there's pictures in the back too. Aww. And a timeline. Okay. Okay, I liked this a lot. This is a good one. I'm gonna read another one right now. I'm gonna read Pride, the story of Harvey Milk and the Rainbow Flag. Um, I know that there is a biopic called Milk. Um, I remember when it came out. I still haven't ever watched it. I like the first page. You have to give them hope. Hope for a better world. Hope for a better tomorrow. Became one of the first openly gay people to be elected to political office in the United States. A symbol, he thought. We need a symbol that shows who we are and how we feel. Something to carry during the march. Something to make people feel they're part of a community. Something to give people hope. Something extraordinary. Oh my god. Five months later, Harvey and the mayor were assassinated. This seems to be more about the flag than Harvey. Ooh. Aww. This is a good one too. I could sit here and read these books all day, but uh, I want to keep the vlog interesting, so. I think I'm going to do something else now. I work at four o'clock today, so I have a couple hours before I have to leave for work, but I'm gonna chillax until I have to go to work and check in with you later. It is now 3 p.m. and I have to leave for work in half an hour, but I've been reading more picture books and I'm just like so excited with with what I'm learning and what I'm reading, so I just wanted to share an update. Um, I just read Building Zaha, the story of architect Zaha Hadid, and I had never heard of her before, but after reading this, I searched some of her buildings and some of her work, and I am just like absolutely astonished by 
like the way that she designs building it's so like the style is just so fluid like these buildings literally look like they're like crashing waves or or like folding over itself or twisting and just like the fluidity of her buildings are on another level and this was just a really cool book i loved how it was written it's very much like a coming of age like overcoming adversity type of story because um not only is she a female architect but she's also a muslim and she was very talented from a young age. She was the first woman, first Iraqi, first Muslim, and youngest person ever to receive the Pritzker Architecture Prize in 2004. And I'm just like absolutely amazed by her work. Here's a picture of one of the, the buildings that she did. Um, amazing. Um, this one called The Music in George's Head which is about George Gershwin, who was an American composer, um, kind of combined styles like jazz and ragtime and classical styles to create um, this piece called Rhapsody in Blue, which is the song that this book mostly focuses on. And fun fact, I looked it up because I was like, I want to hear what this song sounds like. And it was actually in Fantasia. It was one of the songs in Fantasia. But I really liked this book because the art style really complements like the style of music that it's uh, discussing. And it's like this really like blue hued picture book. And it was just like really cool. But then at the back, I was reading about George's life. Oh, this page is really cool. But then at the back, I was reading about George's life and it says he composed this I guess George composed this one opera called Porgy and Bess, which personally I don't know. Um, but he composed Porgy and Bess in 1935. And when I was reading the timeline of Maya Angelou at the back, it says that she actually performed in a production of Porgy and Bess uh, and toured Europe performing it. And this is like 20 years after he finished composing that opera. So it was just really, I was just really excited when I was like, oh, that's connected to the other one. Like he's the composer of the opera she toured with. So I was having like a nerd moment about that. Um, I think like the exciting thing about reading these books is not only do I get to like learn some like interesting and exciting facts about historical figures and just important people, but then it inspires me to like do further research and like look them up on the internet or like listen to their music or search their pieces of art or their architecture and just learning about people like Zaha who I'd never heard of before. And honestly, I'd never heard of George Gershwin either. The Pocket Full of Colors, The Magical World of Mary Blair, Disney Artist Extraordinaire. And she is the woman who designed the It's a Small World ride at Disneyland, at Disney World. And this was a really cool book because her art style was very ahead of its time. So when she worked at Disney, a lot of the guys that worked there, because she was for a while the only female, a lot of the guys were like, you're too out there. It's too colorful. Your style is too modern. Like, no thank you. But um, she kept going and designed like a lot of ads and children's books and then Walt Disney himself called her up to get her to come back to do the It's a Small World design. Um, so I loved reading about her. I kind of knew like a little bit about her because Bryant and I watched a lot of Disney World documentaries over the summer and so I had heard of her and her uh, very well-known art style. So it was cool to read about that, um, you know, it was a good read and she had a huge impact on um, artists, especially more modern artists that have like rediscovered her work and like everything she contributed and after she passed away she was like deemed one of the most important influences in Disney art or something like that, I think. So that was a cool book to read. Um, 
and that's what I've been up to. <laughs> um, I've been up to reading picture books, looking up things that interest me from the picture books, and then I was sorting through our Disney World vacation pictures and deciding which ones that I wanted to put in the scrapbook that my mother put together for us. Um, so that's all, and now I'm about to get ready to go to work, and I'll see you later. about to submit it. I'm about to submit my final assignment for real. Drum roll. I'm losing it. I'm finding it. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Am I ready? Post reply. Boom! I'm done! Done for the semester! She's kind of on the floor. Okay. Woohoo! 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 We did it! I did it! Yes! Woohoo! Yahoo! Woohoo! All right. Mm, 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 mm. No assignments do. No assignments do. Hello, hello. Today is Tuesday, December 7th. And it is almost 3 p.m. And I just turned in my final assignment for the semester. I am officially done with my first semester of grad school. It feels amazing. I'm so happy. <laughs> um, and now I get a month off before I have to do it all over again. But for now, I feel awesome. So good to have that weight off of my shoulders. 
my neighbor's leaf blowing right now. Anytime a leaf touches the grass, she has to get out that like really loud leaf blower machine and like sweep it into the street. It's so annoying and she does it all day and it will never not tick me off. So I have to comment at I have to comment on it every time I hear it and every time it's always going in the background of these videos. But anyway, it's 3 p.m. My haircut is at 4.15. Um, I'm just gonna get a trim and get maybe like an inch off of it since it's been a couple months since I got it cut. Today's been kind of boring. All I've done is work on my assignments and I watched a bunch of booktube this morning. That's what's going on in my life. I had the day off from work. Woohoo! First day I've had off in a week. I have tomorrow off too, so I'm excited about that. And that's what I've got for you. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so excited! Okay, so I just got an email informing me that I got one of the scholarships I applied to and I'm so, so excited because this is gonna help so much! Oh my god! Oh, I, I could cry. I'm so happy. This is gonna help me pay for my spring semester of college, like so much. I've been wondering, I've been waiting to hear back about these scholarships because I applied to like a bunch of them and this is the first one I've heard back about. Oh my god, I like immediately texted my parents and Bryant and was like, this is such a great day. Not only am I done with the semester, but I got one of the scholarships I applied for. I'm so happy. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's all. That's all. That's all. The cherry on top is that that lady's done leaf blowing, so I, so I don't have to hear it right now. Wow, okay, good day, great day, excellent day, amazing day. Okay, I'm just gonna dance for the rest of the day. I'm so excited. Hello, it is about 10.15 p.m. I started reading a graphic memoir called Calling Dr. Laura by Nicole J. Georges. The narrator of this is either bisexual or lesbian. Either way, she's sapphic and it's about her sort of um, investigating who her father was. So far, I'm only um, like a fifth of the way through it, but I'm liking it a lot so far. But I'm about to start playing Animal Crossing, and that's how my day is concluding.
today is December 8th. It is Wednesday and this morning was kind of weird because I was fine, I did yoga, I made breakfast. I was sitting down to eat my breakfast and watch Sato's first Vlogmas video and halfway through eating I was just hit by this like excruciating stomach pain that had me like curled up in a ball on the floor for like an hour so I was kind of salty because I didn't get to finish my breakfast and I just like felt really really bad um, but it's mostly subsided um, I'm sure it's fine but while I was kind of getting over that I filled out a like response sheet to accept that scholarship and I also wrote like a 150 word bio about myself that they had asked for and so now I think I'm going to watch Respect which is a biopic with Jennifer Hudson about Aretha Franklin and while I watch this because it's like a two and a half hour movie I think I'm going to write out Christmas cards or work on wrapping Christmas gifts or something like that um, or maybe play Animal Crossing who knows so that's what I'm doing I haven't really read anymore I started calling Dr. Laura I really like it so far and I want to read more picture book biographies today but we'll see we'll see what I get to because the day is already halfway over just like that uh, but it also doesn't help that I slept in really late this morning. I got up at like 10 a.m., which I never do anymore. Um, and I had this like really stressful dream this morning that I was a server and my section was huge and it kept filling up and I kept forgetting people's drink orders and I was just really overwhelmed. I couldn't find anything and it's been a long time since I've had a dream in which I was serving. So that was kind of funny once I woke up, but it was very stressful while I was sleeping. So yeah, it's been kind of a strange day. Not horribly strange, but just different. And yeah, so I'm feeling better now. And I am also loving my haircut. I don't think I mentioned it after I got my haircut yesterday, but I really love it. It feels so much like more cleaned up. It had been months since I had gotten a haircut, so I really needed it. And I just feel really good and I love it. So, see you later. It is about 4.15 p.m. and I finished watching uh, Respect. Oh my god, this movie is so good. I mean, Jennifer Hudson killed it. And I was watching some of the like post-movie behind the scenes bits and I mean, every song in the movie that she sings is live. It was such an emotional movie and just so powerful. I'm like blown away by this movie. Um, and I got some present wrapping done. So <laughs> um, it was like the first half of the movie I was wrapping presents and then the second half, all I could do is just sit there and watch it.
December 9th at about 3 p.m. Few things to update you on. First is that I finished calling Dr. Laura. I thought that I might write a book review on my blog slantedspines.com about this, but after I finished it, I didn't like it as much as I wanted to, and then I decided not to write about it. So I did finish this, and I did enjoy this, and I really love the art style. Um, it kind of has it kind of has like two different tones to it like sometimes in the present day it's like very shaded and lots of grays and blacks but then when she does like flashbacks of like her childhood it's a lot of white space and like simple lines and dots and stuff um and overall i liked it it's mostly about the narrator nicole finding out the truth about her dad and eventually coming out to her mother and there's a lot of dysfunctional family dynamics and rocky relationships and she's living in Portland with her girlfriend and a bunch of dogs and I really liked Nicole as a narrator and as a person from you know from what I read here and I felt for her a lot and the ending was super sad but I just don't think that the narrative thread was very well organized and it just didn't seem like it concluded in a really strong way and I'm very lenient when it comes to memoir because anyone who can publish their life and open up like that to the masses I'm like props to you but just like as a story and as a narrative um wasn't the strongest but I did really enjoy it and I liked reading it and I loved the art style so, I mean, I do recommend reading it if you're interested in graphic memoir. And then I also read Planting Stories, The Life of Librarian and Storyteller, Pura Belpre. Uh, I talked about this in my Cool Children's Nonfiction Books video, and I had read it before I did that video, but I reread it this morning. And I just absolutely love this picture book. It is so good. And, like, just learning about her life is amazing because um i had never heard of her before reading this book every year since 1996 the american library association has awarded a latinx author and illustrator the pura bel pre award and that is to recognize latinx writers and illustrators who have outstanding who have published outstanding work and recipients of that award include the author of Aristotle and Dante, uh, Discover the Universe, or I forget the title, it's kind of long. And The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo has also been awarded the Pura Bel Pre Award. So that was like another cool connection I made because I had looked up Elizabeth Acevedo the other day I was interested in like when she had new work coming out and I saw that she was a recipient of this award and I was like no way I just found out who she is and her legacy and it was just really cool to connect those dots so I yeah I ended up writing my blog post about this book and I mean I just highly recommend it I love it because it kind of blends some Spanish phrases and words in with the English narration very seamlessly and it's just really cool and very amazing to learn about this incredible woman first Puerto Rican librarian in New York City so I completely forgot to vlog this this morning but I went out to breakfast with my brother and his girlfriend completely forgot to take any videos of my delicious breakfast but for the most part, I've been wrapping a few more Christmas presents. I have been writing some Christmas cards to friends. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I always use uh, junk mail that we get in the mailbox. We get a lot of this like newspaper junk stuff. I usually save them and recycle them by wrapping presents with them. So yeah, I work at five and I'm gonna read a few more children's biographies and show them to you tomorrow after having read them and then that will be the entire vlog. So see you tomorrow. Good morning. <laughs> Two days.
Today is Sunday, December 12th. It is about 1.30 p.m. and I'm here to wrap up the vlog because we are going to see Wicked later today and it's been kind of a busy past few days and I work the next five days so I don't know if I'm going to be doing a vlog this upcoming week. So I have like four or five more picture book biographies to share with you. To share with you. Uh, the first one is Jump at the Sun, the true life tale of unstoppable story catcher Zora Neale Hurston. This is an amazing picture book. I love the way it's written in this very conversational uh, narrative voice that uses a lot of figurative language and it was just a really well told story about Zora's life and I just absolutely love this. I highly recommend it if you can check it out because it's just so it's just so well done and I loved learning about her life because I forgot that she was an anthropologist as well as a writer. Um, and then the next one I have is On Wings of Words, The Extraordinary Life of Emily Dickinson. This one I really enjoyed as well. I like which poem excerpts that the author chose to include in here. And reading this, it was just kind of funny how much I related to Emily Dickinson because she's looking at the world and seeing a lot of illness and she feels her emotions really intensely and loves nature and as she gets older she begins staying in the house more and more which at this point in my life like I said I really relate to so this is a really well done narrative about her entire life pretty much as well um, so I also recommend this one. This is The Girl Who Thought in Pictures, the story of Dr. Temple Grandin and I don't know if you've heard of it but there is a movie about this woman and her invention of the like I don't know what it's called basically like something she constructed to guide cows in a very humane way that considers how they view or perceive stimuli and she's an autistic inventor so that's really cool this one is narrated in somewhat of a poetic rhythmic rhyming scheme so it kind of has like a like a rhythm to the words um, and this was also well done and emphasizes that yes she is different but not less so this was a really cool picture book as well with lots of additional biographic information about her at the end and then the last one that I read is She Made a Monster How Mary Shelley Created Frankenstein the illustrations in this are really cool and genuinely creepy uh, and this isn't about Mary Shelley's entire life as much as it is about just how she came up with the idea how to write Frankenstein and this is like a really creepy picture <laughs> um, and so this is this is also well done and I really think that the illustrations work well with the mood of the story it's telling. This last book I want to highlight, I haven't read it yet. It just came into the library for me because I had it on hold. It's Notable Native People. It's like a collection of 50 indigenous leaders, dreamers, and change makers from past and present. And I really like the colors and the illustrations in this. And like I said, I haven't had the chance to read it yet, but I just wanted to highlight it on this in this vlog so that if you're looking up any of these books, this is like another option for a book for you to look up. Um, as well. So with that being said, I am going to finish editing this vlog and I will see you in my next video. Bye! See ya!